Good evening to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, from Metro Manila, the metropolitan region of Manila, in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. I'm going to uh, film a video now in honor of Diana Spencer, the prince, uh, Princess of Wales, who was born exactly 60 years ago today. As we all know, she died tragically in the early hours of August the 31st, 1997, at the early age of 36, in a controversial and still partly obscure car crash or car accident in Paris, along with her boyfriend or her last boyfriend, Dodi Al Fayed, whom she apparently planned to marry, and the car driver, Henri Paul, who was a French citizen. Uh, Trevor Rhys Jones, who was a British bodyguard, either of Diana or of Dodi Al Fayed, survived with major injuries. Princess Diana grew up in a broken ho home because her parents separated and divorced already in 1969 when she was only eight years old. She and her siblings were given custody by their father, Lord Spencer, who imposed little discipline on his children and therefore allowed them to do much as they pleased as long as they were not too wild in their behavior. Diana loved watching uh, television, watching films, uh, singing and dancing. She even actually, according to one of uh, probably her most famous biographer, Andrew Morton, uh, dreamed of becoming a professional dancer or ballet dancer, but she grew too tall. She was five feet, 10 inches or one meter, 78 centimeters tall. Uh, Diana also liked writing essays and compositions and thank you notes. Uh, tragically, her schooling did not go well. At least her secondary school went terribly because she dreaded exams. And unfortunately, in those years, in the 1970s, it seems that uh, at least at the majority of British secondary schools, the students who had this dread, awful dread, irrational fear of exams were not allowed to sit them alone or with only a tutor, supervisor or um, a teacher. If that had been allowed back then, possibly Diana could have with the proper tutoring and preparation, uh, psychological training, at least she would have earned passing marks because she was not a stupid a girl or woman. She just was not successful at school. Then she went to a Swiss boarding school, but after weeks there and having written, according to Mr. Morton, various letters begging her father to let her return to Britain, she was allowed to leave that school. Um, when she turned 18 in July 1979, she was given as a birthday gift by her mother a flat that she shared with, I think, two other young ladies in London. She eventually became a kindergarten assistant. According to her biographer, she had no education or previous work experience, like qualifications for that work. She only had a general idea of wanting to work with children. And as more than one of her observers um, emphasized while Diana was still alive, whatever her other faults might have been, she was definitely a good mother. She was a very loving and caring mother. And more than once I've seen that replay of her giving a big hug to her young sons some 30 or 31 years ago. William and Henry or Harry. Incidentally, the recently born uh, second child or daughter and the first daughter, maybe the only daughter I don't know of, Harry and <coughs> Meghan Markle, or Princess uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, was named Lilibet Diana. Lilibet because, according to um, at least the official version, uh, Queen Elizabeth, when she was a little girl and tried to uh, say her name, uh, said accidentally Lilibet, and then Diana, of course, in honor of the late 
Princess of Wales. Um, Princess, or I'm sorry, Lady Diana Spencer had for the first time met her future husband, Prince Charles, in a social event in 1977. They were almost 13 years apart in physical age. Diana was born in July 1961, Charles already back in November 1948, and they have received very different types of upbringing. Uh, while Diana's parents, and especially her father, who had been had custody of her and her siblings since 1969, when his marriage unfortunately had broken down, had never physically punished her or her siblings and had imposed little, a few limits uh, or duties either on her or on her siblings, Charles was brought up in a very traditional way, especially by uh, his father, the recently deceased Prince Philip, who, uh, at least according to uh, Mr. Morton, used a shoe or some other object to beat Charles. Even if Charles just slightly misbehaved, he was sent to his room. And then he also was not allowed uh, to speak unless he was asked a question or asked or demanded to speak. And according to one of his governesses or tutors, uh, because of this uh, strict, even cruel upbringing, Charles was a very nervous and fearful boy. No wonder Charles started to rebel already at the age of 14 in 1963, according to uh, a British book called The Chronicle or Chronicle of the Royal Family. He already illegally bought a brandy when he was at boarding school. And then this may, may have explained his sexual escapades, not the least between him and his current and second wife, um, Camilla Parker Bowles. But to get back to Diana, <clears throat> what then drove her and Charles, despite their differing personalities, Diana was much more social than Charles. Uh, she enjoyed uh, informal social talk, chatter, much more than Charles did. Um, since her upbringing had been so liberal, she had great difficulty adjusting to the traditional, even old-fashioned royal protocol and she really disliked the dinner parties where she had to sit beside old uh, people who, in his opinion, in her opinion, were very boring. Um, and also expressing her opinions. Sometime in the 1980s, when her sons were still very young, she expressed uh, an anti-hunting and shooting opinion at the dinner table uh, in Sandringham Palace, uh, or in uh, yes, in Balmoral, in Balmoral Palace in Scotland, so in the north of the United Kingdom. Um, and she even claimed that the parents who encourage their children to shoot animals and birds are not fit to be parents. And Prince Philip. Uh, asked her to repeat herself, and she did. Uh, Prince Philip then said rather rudely, I think you've said enough for one dinner. <laughs> Diana stuck to her gun saying, no, I haven't. I've only just begun. Uh, how can you call yourselves responsible parents and allow your children to practice such cruelty? Uh, Prince Charles had early in that uh, debate tried to claim that he didn't think Diana actually meant that. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, who uh, really disliked such conflictual arguments, said, I think that's enough. Diana shouted, no, it's not enough. Uh, I will only stop when I have stopped uh, parents uh, from committing such cruelty. Only then will I have said enough. Thank you and good night. And with that, she all but threw her napkin at the table and then uh, ran out of the room. Uh, Prince Philip sprang to uh, 
his feet, trying to stop Diana because the royal protocol declares in Britain that no one is allowed to leave the royal table uh, except uh, with, with the king's or the queen's permission. And even during the royal family's own gatherings like that dinner at Balmoral Palace, the protocol is in force. But the Queen Elizabeth did not like conflict, so she let Diana go. Her mother, the Queen Mother, also called Elizabeth, claimed without citing any reasons that young woman, meaning Diana. Well, we have to remember that their age difference was some 61 years. And uh, the Queen Mother had been brought up, if uh, possible, even in a more traditional way uh, than Prince Charles. Well, in any case, a tragic event that took place off the nor uh, northwestern coast or western coast of Ireland in August 1979, where Lord Mountbatten, his wife, his grandson, and then another boy, at least these people were killed uh, because the Irish Republican Army, a terrorist organization whose eventual goal is, or at least has been, the reunification of Ireland, had planted a bomb in their fishing yard. That event um, made Charles really shocked and also determined to settle down and eventually get married. He had had uh, more or less serious dating relationships throughout the 1970s, the most serious one of which had been with Camilla Parker Bowles, who then had found another man to marry, but they are now married, uh, Charles and Camilla. In the autumn of 1980, apparently, Charles and Diana began to date secretly. Uh, Diana had turned 19 in July, while Charles turned 32 that November. Finally, in late February 1981, the uh, engagement or betrothal was announced, and then they gave an interview to BBC television. And when the interviewer asked them, if they were in love, uh, Diana quickly replied, of course, while Charles was more quizzical, whatever in love means. And actually, Charles expressed, according to at least the English language Wikipedia, a few days before the wedding, um, doubts to his close friends as to the correctness of this step of marrying Diana. And Diana, according to the same Wikipedia article, uh, was even contemplating the annulment of their marriage. And I'm old enough, I'm now 48 years old, going, going on 49, to remember the fa fact that I watched um, in a, a farmhouse or another rural dwelling in Eastern Finland, Charles's and Diana's wedding. Incidentally, it is available, at least as one video, even on YouTube. But I have obviously, during the four decades that have passed since I watched that broadcast, forgotten all the details. Be that as it may, they got married and then they had, uh, within the first three years or so of marriage, their two sons, William in uh, June, June 1982 and Henry or Harry in September 1984. Um, Diana suffered from postnatal depression, I think, uh, after the birth of William. She once, as a kind of cry for help, threw herself deliberately down the stairs and got injured at one of the royal palaces. Her struggle against bulimia and uh, anorexia, bulimia in other words, eating much food and then vomiting it, and then anorexia, uh, trying to eat as little food as possible, she struggled uh, with those symptoms for much of her life. Eventually, she was able to overcome them. Tragically, their marriage did not last. Sometime either in 1986 or 1987, they stopped sharing a bed, in other words, stopped sleeping together. And at last, the rumors that their marriage was on the rocks were confirmed by the somber British Prime Minister at the time and the leader of the Conservative Party, John Major, who had the sad duty to announce 
their decision to separate in December 1992 during a full session of the British House of Commons. They eventually divorced in August 1996. Um, between the years that had passed, nearly four years, uh, Charles had admitted having been unfaithful to Diana in a television interview in 1994. And then in October 1995, um, Diana had given a lengthy and controversial television interview with journalist Martin Bashir, then of BBC. After that uh, interview or years later, he relocated to the United States, by the way. And uh, this was a bombshell interview uh, when it was first aired in November 1995. Um, and probably its most memorable line was um, Princess Diana's rather sarcastic answer to journalist Bashir's question, do you think that uh, Prince Charles's relationship with Mrs. Camilla Parker Bowles was a significant factor in the breakdown of their marriage? Well, there were three of us in that marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Diana herself had extramarital affairs with James Hewitt, uh, Will Carling, uh, and then there was a third man, I think, of Middle Eastern origin, and then after the breakdown of her marriage, she had the brief summertime affair with Emad or Dodi Al-Fayed. Uh, Diana grew disgusted at the paparazzis, those gossip magazines and uh, newspapers, tabloid newspapers, photographers, photographing journalists who tried to get as many photographs of her as possible. Um, and she actually discussed with her brother, if I remember correctly, Charles Spencer, uh, the possibility of moving away from Britain so that she could become a more private person. As a result of her divorce from Charles that was finalized in August 1996, tragically, as it turned out just one year before she passed away, as a result of that even more tragic car accident, um, Diana no longer could use the title Her Royal Highness, however, she was still Diana Prince, Princess of Wales. Uh, she did a lot of charitable work, visiting a number of nurseries and kindergartens, and during the last year of her life, 1997, uh, she visited a number of uh, the victims uh, of landmines in, I think, Angola, southwestern Africa who had accidentally stepped on those landmines buried in the ground and had lost uh, limbs, usually legs. Uh, Diana also incidentally um, met Mother Teresa shortly before they both died. Mother Teresa died several days after Diana of natural causes at the age of 87. So Diana returned from the Côte d'Azur, the French Mediterranean coast, to Paris on August 30th, 1997, and she and uh, Dodi Al-Fayed dined at the Hotel Ritz. If they had gone somewhere else, if they had managed to keep their itinerary secret from the paparazzis, chances are that both of them would still be alive, because of course, the very fact that Henri Paul uh, speeded away from the Ritz Hotel um, was due to the fact that even though a decoy car that resembled the actual Mercedes-Benz that unfortunately took Henri Paul, uh, Dodi Al-Fayed and Princess Diana to their deaths and Trevor Reese jones to his serious injuries from which fortunately he recovered, then obviously the very fact that they were chased by paparazzis and Princess Diana just did not want to be photographed by paparazzis, by the paparazzis uh, that contributed significantly to the car crash. But also, Ripoll had been drinking and also uh, had been taking a drug, a narcotic. And then it's possible that indeed, uh, before losing control of the car, uh, in that underpass bridge 
or tunnel under a past tunnel, uh, he might have collided with a Fiat Uno that never has been found. Several days after Diana's death at last, Queen Elizabeth II broke her silence and gave a live television broadcast uh, expressing her sorrow at Diana's thing and then uh, shortly thereafter there was Diana's televised funeral, probably most memorable for the singing of one of Diana's favorite hymns, I Bow to Be My Country, and by Elton John's rendition uh, of a modified version of his um, song, Candle in the Wind. Uh, tragically, in the months immediately following Diana's death, there were incidents of suicide and self-harm among people aged approximately, I think, 25 to 45, so roughly Diana's generation. Let's see in the Wikipedia article if there's something else to be <clears throat> said. So Diana's activism and glamour made her an international icon. She also spoke uh, in favor of treating properly uh, the women who were suffering from mental problems, because she herself knew that very well. Very, we could say even with a tragic um, precision. <clears throat> and earned her enduring popularity as well as unprecedented public scrutiny, exacerbated by her tumultuous private life. I can remember a headline uh, in a British tabloid newspaper uh, in the 1990s before Diana passed away, image contest. In other words, Diana was projecting this um, motherly, caring, <coughs> innocent victim image while Ch uh, Charles was then projecting a more dutiful and royal image. <clears throat> Her legacy has had a deep impact on the royal family and British society. She was actually born an aristocrat, so she wasn't a full commoner, contrary to, for example, Duchess Catherine and Duchess Meghan. Well, Meghan, of course, uh, given the fact that she, except for those nearly two years or a couple of years has lived in the United States all her life and uh, already the original US Constitution forbade uh, the United States from granting any titles of nobility. Of course there's a catch. Those people who were born uh, in the monarchies and those republics that allow such titles of nobility even though they don't grant them or then belong to, for example, exiled royal or aristocratic families, they will still officially, or at least privately, have those aristocratic titles, but of course, they have only a symbolic value. <clears throat> As Princess of Wales, Diana undertook royal duties on behalf of the Queen, meaning Queen Elizabeth II, and represented her at functions across the Commonwealth realms. In other words, the uh, 53 or so countries, including Britain itself, so Britain and almost or most of its um, former colonies, many of them in Africa and here in Asia, by the way, uh, belong to the Commonwealth. And then most of those countries, or many of them at least, have retained a nominal link to Britain by being constitutional monarchies and having uh, the British monarch as the nominal titular head of state, normally represented by the governor general. For example, in the middle country where I lived, Canada, in the late 1980s and early 1990s. <clears throat> she was celebrated in the media for her unconventional approach to charity work. Her patronage is initially centered on children and youth, but she later became known for involvement with AIDS patients and campaigning for the removal of landmines. She also raised awareness and advocated ways to help people affected with cancer and mental illness. The princess was initially noted for her shyness, but her charisma and friendliness endeared her to the public and helped her reputation survive the acrimonious collapse of her marriage. 
Considered to be very photogenic, she was a leader of fashion in the 1980s and 1990s. So she was born in, at Park House, Sandringham, Norfolk, United Kingdom. She was the fourth of five children of John Spencer, Viscount Althorpe, or Althorpe, who lived from 1924 to 1992, and Francis Spencer, Viscountess Althorpe, Nee Roche, who lived from 1936 to 2004. The Spencer family incidentally had been closely allied with the British royal family for several generations. So her siblings were Sarah, James, and Charles. Her infant brother, John, tri died shortly after his birth, one year before Diana was born, so in 1960. The desire for an heir, a male heir, therefore, um, or that is, added strain to her parents' marriage, and Lady Althorpe was reportedly sent to Harley Street Clinics in London to determine the cause of the problem. The royal family frequently spent holidays at the neighboring Sandringham house, and Diana played with the Queen's sons, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward. Yeah, so Diana was seven years old, so correction, slight correction to what I said earlier, when her parents divorced. In 1976, Lord Althorpe married Rain, Countess of Dartmouth. However, Diana never developed a good relationship with her stepmother. She even called her a bully. So. I made some media criticism in 1982, I think she decided to take William, who was still a baby, on her first major tours of Australia and New Zealand, and many people applauded the decision. By her own admission, it was Malcolm Fraser, the Australian Prime Minister at the time, who had suggested that Diana take baby William with her. According to Diana, she and Charles were closest during her pregnancy with Harry, so in 1983 to 1984. She chose her son's first given names, dismissed a royal family nanny, and engaged one of her own choosing, selected their schools and clothing, planned their outings, and took them to school herself as often or often as her schedule permitted. She also organized her public duties around their timetables. The divorce settlement finalized in August 28, 1996 was rather generous to say the least for Diana, at least financially, because she received a lump sum settlement of 17 million British pounds, equivalent to over 32.1 million British pounds in 2019, as well as an allowance of 400,000 British pounds per year. Uh, so over 30,000 British pounds per month. The couple also signed a confidentiality agreement that prohibited or banned them from discussing the details of the divorce or of their married life. Let's scroll down this. Article, yes. So regarding her death, which took place almost 24 years ago, in the early hours local time of August the 31st, 1997. So it, the underpass tunnel 
was and probably still is called Pont de l'Allemand in Paris. The accident car was Mercedes-Benz W140. And so Trevor Reese Jones was their bodyguard. In 1999, according to a French investigation poll, who lost control of the vehicle at high speed while intoxicated by alcohol and under the effects of prescription drugs was solely responsible for the crash. However, indirectly, uh, the fact that Diana and Dodi was being faced, were being chased by paparazzis at least contributed to his uh, speeding. However, Henri Paul was severely drunk or inebriated and antidepressants and traces of an antipsychotic drug in his blood possibly worsened his inebriation. In 2008, the jury at a British inquest returned a verdict of unlawful killing through grossly negligent driving by Paul and the following paparazzi vehicles. Some media reports claimed Reese Jones survived because he was wearing a seat belt but other investigations revealed that none of the occupants of the car were wearing their seat belts. Her funeral was watched live or as a recorded version by an estimated 2.5 billion people. So on Saturday, August the 30th, 1997, Diana left Sardinia, which is a northern Italian island which is incidentally the southern neighbor of the French island of Corsica, on a private jet airplane and, or aeroplane and arrived in Paris with Egyptian film producer Dodi Fayed, the son of business, businessman Mohamed Al-Fayed and his Finnish-born wife, Heini Vaten. Uh, they planned to stop in Paris and then fly to London, having spent the preceding nine days together on board Mohammed's yacht, Johnny Carl, on the French and Italian Riviera. They had intended to stay there for the night. Mohammed Al Fayed was and still remains the owner of the Hotel Ritz Paris and resided in an apartment on Rue Arsène Housset or the uh, Arsène Housset Street, a short distance from the hotel just off the Avenue des Champs-Élysées, or the Avenue of the uh, Élysées Fields, which is also close to the French presidential palace, the Palais de l'Élysée. Henri Paul, who was the deputy head of security at the Ritz, had been instructed to drive the hired black Mercedes-Benz uh, W140 model year 1994 to elude the paparazzi. A decoy vehicle left the Ritz first from the main entrance on Place Vendôme, attracting a throng of photographers. Diana and Fayette then departed from the hotel's rear entrance. Rue Cambon at around uh, 0 hours 20 minutes on August the 31st, Central European Standard Time or Summer Time, or 22.20 uh, on August the 30th, uh, Universal Time Clock, the British Standard Time. Heading apartment in Rue Arsène Housset. They did this to avoid the nearly 30 photographers waiting in front of the hotel. After leaving the Rue Cambon and crossing the Place de la Concorde, in uh, French, by the way, plus means square, while place is actually en droit. So this is a linguistic note. I have, by God's grace, been allowed to teach French for about four years, teach or tutor. They drove along Cour La Reine and Cour Albert Le Premier, the embankment road along the right bank of the Rivet River Seine into the Place de l'Allemand underpass. At zero hours, 23 minutes local time, so just three minutes after their departure, Paul lost control of the vehicle at the entrance to the Pont de l'Allemand tunnel. The car struck the right-hand wall and then swerved to the left of the two-lane carriageway before it collided head-on with a 13th pillar supporting the roof. The car was speeding at an estimated velocity of 105 kilometers per hour, over twice the tunnel's speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour. 
It then spun and hit the stone wall of the tunnel backwards, finally coming to a stop. <clears throat> the impact caused substantial damage, especially to the front half of the vehicle, because there was no guardrail at the time between the pillars to prevent this. Witnesses arriving shortly after the crash reported smoke. Witnesses also reported that photographers and motorcycles swarmed the Mercedes sedan before it entered the tunnel. With the four occupants, occupants Henri Paul and Dodi al who had died instantly, and then uh, Diana, who had been injured fatally, and uh, Reese Jones, who had been injured seriously, but not fatally. Uh, the photographers reached the scene. Some did rush to help, tried to open the doors and help the victims, while some of them took photographs. Even I have seen a photograph that uh, allegedly online, that allegedly was taken of uh, the fatally injured Diana showing her pro profile. Diana, according to uh, Andrew Morton, uh, said, oh my God, leave me alone, leave me alone, or something like that. Police arrived on scene around 10 minutes after the crash, or seven to 10 minutes, and an ambulance was on site five minutes later, according to witnesses. France Info Radio reported that one photographer was beaten by witnesses who were horrified by the scene. Five photographers were arrested directly. Later, two others were detained and around 20 rolls of film were taken directly from them. Police also impounded their vehicles afterwards. Firemen, in addition, arrived at the scene to help remove the victims. Reese Jones was still conscious, but he had survived suffered multiple serious facial injuries and a head contusion. The front occupant's airbags had functioned normally. Diana was also still conscious. Uh, in June 2007, so nearly 10 years later, the Channel 4 documentary Diana, the witnesses in the tunnel claimed that the first person to touch her was off duty to physician Frédéric Maillet who by chance arrived to the tunnel. Maillet reported that Diana had no visible injuries, but was in shock. Finally, at one hour, exactly so uh, 37 minutes after the crash, she went into cardiac arrest, having been removed from the car, and following external cardiopulmonary resuscitation, her heart started beating again. She was moved to the SAMU ambulance at 1.18 a.m. local time, left the scene at 1.41, and finally arrived at the Pitié-Salpêtrière hospital at 2.06. Fayed had been sitting in the left rear passenger seat uh, and was just like Paul uh, pronounced dead on removal from the wreckage. Paul was later found to have a blood alcohol level of 1.75 grams per liter of blood, which is about 3.5 times the legal limit in France, equivalent to about 2.2 times the legal limit in Canada, Britain, and the United States. Although the doctors and nurses tried their utmost to save her life, Diana was too severely injured. Um, she was suffering from internal cardiac muscle. I'm sorry. Uh, like her heart had been displaced to the right side of the chest from the left side where it is, which tore the pulmonary vein and the pericardium. He di she died at the hospital at approximately four hours local time. Anesthesiologist Bruno Rioux announced her death at six hours local time at a news conference held at the hospital. Later that morning, French Prime Minister Lionel Jospin and Interior Minister Jean-Pierre Chevenement visited the hospital. At around five o'clock, Diana's former husband, Charles Prince of Wales, and her two older sisters, Lady, Lady Sarah Mac uh, Corcordale and La Lady Jane Fellows, arrived in Paris. The group visited the hospital with French President Jacques Chirac and thanked the doctors for trying to save Diana's life. Prince Charles accompanied Diana's body to Britain later that same day.
and uh, we of course offer our condolences, albeit a quarter century after her death, to Diana's loved ones and wish all the best and above all God's abundant blessings for the remainder of their lives.